An array variable is a special type of pointer. No, no, it really isn't. Of course, there are lots of books that say it is, and yet everything about that statement is wrong. An array is not a variable, and it is not a pointer. Now, this is not just my opinion, it's a verifiable fact, and in the next few minutes, I'll show you why. Okay, so let's look at an example. This is taken from my book, The Little Book of C Programming. Uh, now here I've got an array of characters. You can see that's here, str1, and it's initialized to the string, the array of characters, hello. And there is also a pointer, str2, and that's a pointer to an array of characters which is initialized with the characters of the string goodbye. Now, pointer str2 is a variable, so I can, of course, change um, the value of what it points to, like this, str2 equals good day. And if I run it, and you can see it's been changed to the new value. I can't actually do that with str1. Let me try it. Let's close this down and start again. str1 and I've immediately got this error. And if I try to run it, it won't let me. And look here, it says expression must be a modifiable value and left operand must be an L value. Well, put simply, what that means is the value on the left of the expression here, that's the name str1, must be assignable to. In other words, it's telling me that I cannot assign this new string to the identifier str1, because str1 is not a variable. Why this is the case will become clearer when you understand what that array really is. It is literally an address, not a pointer, and that is important. Now, let's look at the difference. Now, in these two printf statements, I display the addresses and the values of the array str1 and the pointer str2. Two, let me run it and see what we see. So this is the output of the code. The values are numbers here shown in hexadecimal. These numbers represent addresses, that is physical locations in computer memory. Incidentally, even though it's conventional to show addresses in hexadecimal, there's nothing magical about that. You could just as easily show them in decimal and uh, if you're not that familiar with hexadecimal, well, that might be easier, even though normally this is the way to display pointer values. I'm just going to substitute these p's here in this uh, string with d's, and that will then, when I run it, display the numbers as decimal values, just ordinary conventional sort of numbers instead of hexadecimal. But you see the same thing. The number of the array and the address of the array is the same because the array is at that location. An array literally is an address with elements here, they are the characters, stored at adjacent addresses or offsets from the array address. The address and the value of the pointer, str2, however, are different. The address is where the pointer itself is stored in memory. Its value is the address of the array, here that's the string goodbye, which is stored in a different memory location. Now, let's clarify this. Let's go back into Visual Studio, and I've got the immediate window here. And using the Visual Studio debugger, I can go into the immediate window and start entering things to look more closely at them. Well, I'll enter str1, and this is what it shows me. That's the array. This is the array address. These are the characters stored at that address and adjacent locations in memory. Now, if I enter str2, now, this is my pointer. This is the pointer value, which is the address of the string goodbye to which it points. But let me now enter ampersand str2. That's the way of displaying the address. And this is what I see. 
it shows me two addresses. This is the address of the pointer, and this, this second address is its value. That value is the address of the array of characters forming the string goodbye. Notice they are two different addresses. And if I enter str1, again using ampersand to display its address, and this is what I see. So I still only see the one address, the single address. That's the address of the array of characters forming the string hello. So that shows quite clearly, I think, that an array is an address, not a pointer. So to be absolutely clear, a pointer is a variable which is stored at one address and its value is a number which is another address. We say the pointer variable points to that value and that value can be changed. A pointer may be assigned another address to make it point to something else. By contrast, an array is nothing but an address. It's one address and it is always that address. No other address can be assigned to it. Data items stored at locations in memory after that address may form the elements of the array. Those data items may be changed, but the array itself never is because an array literally is an address. Now, if this still seems confusing, you have to bear in mind what happens between writing and running a program. By the time the program runs, the name you entered for the array, for example, str1 in my program, well, that's vanished. When the program is compiled and then loaded, that array name has been replaced by the address of the array of characters. An address is always one specific location, which is why it's impossible to assign any other value to it. This contrasts with variables such as str2, my pointer, and when this is compiled and run, one address has been set aside for the pointer variable, and that address can, can store a number representing another address to indicate what it points to, and that is why I can assign a new value to a pointer variable, but I cannot assign a new value to an array. Given that we can see quite clearly that an array name is not a variable, and since it cannot reference other addresses, it is not a pointer either, why is there still so much confusion? Well, it turns out that the confusion is added to a bit by the way in which arrays are described in what is often regarded as the definitive book on C the C programming language by Kernighan and Ritchie. Now, this is what the first edition says. A reference to an array is converted by the compiler to a pointer to the beginning of the array. Hmm. Now, from a compiler writer's perspective, that may make some sense. What it means is that when compiled and run, the array name has gone and a number referencing the array address has been put in its place. And loosely, you could say this number points to the start of the array, but that's not a C pointer. In fact, from the C programmer's perspective, referring to this as a pointer is confusing, ambiguous and incorrect. In the second edition of the book, Kernighan and Ritchie rewrote that troublesome sentence. In its place, we now have, by definition, the value of a variable or expression of type array is the address of element zero of the array. Now, this second version is correct, unambiguous and true. This is exactly what I've been saying. An, an array is the address of element zero, that is, the start of the array. However, there still remains one problematic word here, and that is variable. Later on, in the same page of the book, the authors make it clear that an array name is not a variable. This is what the first edition says. There is one difference between an array name and a pointer that must be kept in mind. A pointer is a variable, 
but an array name is a constant, not a variable. So here again it says what I've been saying in this video. An array name is different from a pointer and an array is constant, not a variable. Edition 2 of the book omits the word constant, presumably to avoid confusion with the formally defined idea of constants. But once again, it's explicit that an array name is not a pointer and it's not a variable. OK, so there you have it. I hope that helps to explain what an array really is. And if anyone tells you that an array is a special type of pointer variable, well, you can tell them exactly why it isn't. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, click the button and the bell and I'll be back with something else soon.